Hello, you wonderful people. So for today's video, I want to talk about some news that had came out. It was basically uh, Andy Muschietti, you know, the current director for uh, the uh, Solo Flash movie, which we now know is going to be apparently a Flashpoint movie, because obviously that's something I've talked about in the past, like a couple of years ago, that was the thought that the first Solo Flash movie was going to be a Flashpoint movie, which I thought was interesting, because I'm like, I've talked about this before, like, I feel like that would be like a Flash three or four movie, not the first movie, but obviously for a lot of people, they look at this as an opportunity to kind of restart the universe because, you know, kind of get the DCEU or the quote unquote DCEU, the DC movies kind of more in a uh, cinematic continuity universe, you know, so. So basically, Andy Muschietti had talked about the fact is that this Flashpoint is going to be a different version of Flashpoint. And obviously, uh, that kind of gets your mind racing about like, okay, what that potentially can mean. And uh, for this video, I kind of want to break down two major thought processes I have on it. One of said processes is that I'm thinking what he means by that is going to be a much smaller version of Flashpoint. Because obviously, you know, in the grand scheme of things, Flashpoint is a massive storyline because it has massive implications for the DC universe. I mean, it starts off as a personal story, but because it's, you know, it's a tale about time travel, it does involve like ripples all across you know time and space and has big like i said a big impact on the dc universe so i think what he means is rather than it being the big you know thing that it typically is storyline wise in the comic books they're going to be scaling it down because i mean not every key figure that's involved in flashpoint is established i mean you got some of the heavy hitters like Superman, which obviously that's kind of in a, depending on how the whole Henry Cavill situation plays out. Um, but uh, Wonder Woman and Aquaman are established. So you got some of the key figures, but even like I brought it up before, his main antagonist, the reverse Flash, doesn't exist in this continuity yet. Maybe he does and we're just not aware of it. They just haven't really referenced it. So I'm wondering what that whole thing is going to play a role in, like how that whole thing is going to play out. Uh, but my thought is that they're probably going to go more so the CW Flash route because that was a much smaller story. Like, it had ripple effects across uh, the Arrowverse. It made changes to the timelines and stuff like that, sure. But it was more so a very, very personal story for Barry. Like, the most people that were uh, affected by uh, the change were the people in his life. And so I think this movie's going to go more down that route because I think it is going to be more because obviously you know the story is he goes back in time and you know stops his mom from being murdered and I think probably you know Andy Muschietti obviously having like a little bit of a background in horror like I mean obviously I'm not familiar with his full resume but obviously more recently he did it in it chapter two so there could be like a borderline horror element to this and not necessarily like a scary sense but more so like a cautionary tale like because you know like i said it's a, it is a time travel story and this could kind of weave into like what they did in um the flash tv show but basically barry undid flashpoint but things didn't fit back the way he thought they would so he tries to reverse everything fix everything because there were changes still different from the original timeline it came from so jay garrett st stopped him to be like hey you can't do it when you went back in time and un tried to do on everything you broke basically the space-time continuum and it's like he uses a crack cup for example being like see you try and put it back together the crack is still there and the more traveling and changing stuff in time you do the more you'll break the timeline until it becomes a big big issue so there's no ever repairing the timeline and i think that could be like the cautionary tale of like every you know like the ripple effect the butterfly effect and that could be something that ezra miller's like flash kind of deals with is the fact is that he you know, it's like, oh, every time he tries to fix the timeline, like, he, I was like, in this timeline, my mom's alive, but then, like, everything else kind of falls apart. Like I said, it still keeps heart and true to the Flashpoint storyline in itself, just going to be, uh, like I said, on a smaller scale, like I said, more personal uh, scale. I'm curious to see what that means for his love life, is that means there's going to be an Iris West situation, like, hey, maybe he knows Iris in his personal life, but hey, once he undoes time, once he does Flashpoint, it's like, oh, we're suddenly together. Like I said, it just could be like him constantly trying to fix things, but things just keep getting worse and worse. And you could play with that storyline of him kind of breaking space and time a little bit. And, you know, like I said, keeping true to the Flashpoint story. I should also note, like, once again, my knowledge of Flashpoint is based on the TV show, but also uh, the animated movie adaptation. I've never, I, like I said, I'm sure that's a much more condensed version of it. So I've never read the original comic book story. So obviously that's one thought process I have about it. The other kind of involves spoilers for Crisis on Infinite Earths Part Four in particular, but you know, so if you haven't seen part four, do not watch this because going forward, because I will be spoiling some stuff. So uh, you have been warned. Uh, so that now that you kind of been warned, I would assume the big cameo appearance of Ezra Miller on uh, the, you know, during Crisis part four kind of might 
mean something going forward as well when Andy said different version. To give you a little uh, behind the scenes, I actually had already previously recorded this video, but it was a couple days before Crisis uh, Part 4 and 5 had aired, and so now I'm decided like, well, I kind of have to include that in the video, so I just decided to take the video down and just kind of re-do uh, it now, including this new news, but uh, obviously because of the crossover, like I said, the cameo that I think like everyone was like, wait, what? This is happening? It's crazy. Now, you know, we had Grant Gustin's Flash meet Ezra Miller's Flash, kind of meaning that the DCEU movies, or rather just the D DC Cinematic movies, are in the same continuity as everything in the Arrowverse, which is nuts and it's crazy. Uh, obviously, at the end of, well, during that moment, we see Ezra disappear, and I love that they made a bit out of it where it's like, uh, Barry's like, oh, I'm the Flash. Well, Grant's Flash is like, oh, I'm the Flash, and he's like, the Flash? I I was, and it made me go, holy crap, you've never been named in the movies. So it's like, cause like no one really goes by like their moniker and like, no, like I don't, Diana doesn't really go by Wonder Woman and you know, uh, Arthur doesn't really go by Aquaman. Like some people call him that, but it's not like he goes by it. It's not like a Batman or Superman type of situation. So of course he doesn't actually have a name yet. Cause he doesn't really, he doesn't even get his suit until Justice League. So he's still a newfound hero. So it's just kind of interesting to know at this point, like in that continuity, it's like, hey, I haven't become the like gotten a name yet and it's almost like you can almost look at it as like oh wait could that be that well because the, the crazy thing is when you think about it in the grand scheme of things it's like the way crisis ends obviously a lot of the Arrowverse stuff is now on the same earth but then that kind of spins off and shows you that obviously the multiverse kind of expands again showing us, us where the rest of the DC, DC shows pop up you know Stargirl, uh, Swamp Thing, uh, Titans as well as um Doom Patrol, like obviously, uh, even referencing a Green Lantern, uh, like Earth 12 or whatever. So a lot of that continuity has kind of been reshifted around to show you that it is still within the same continuity. Just they're just somewhere out there in the multiverse, kind of doing their own thing. Well, we never actually found out what happened to Ezra Miller's Flash after he disappeared. But he, the last line he said is like, I, I told Victor this, like he had referenced, like he had talked to Victor about all this stuff. So like Cyborg. So it's like. So we can assume that maybe uh, Ezra Miller's Flash and that DC continuity from the movies is back in this multiverse somewhere. We're just not specifying what Earth is taking place on. And so, this, well, because the thing is, he probably won't remember. Because uh, originally only the Paragons had their memories of the original multiverse and everything, and even it being destroyed. But obviously John Jones, uh, uh, Martian Manhunter went around and gave a lot of the main characters memories of like, oh, everything that went down during the crisis um, on Infinite Earths event. So they know, but obviously everyone from every other Earth will never know what went down. So that means Ezra's Flash might not remember. Maybe, maybe not. I, I, I don't know. Like, because that's something, like I said, I had to re-record this because like, that's something that kind of keep in mind with this whole different version of Flashpoint. It could actually be kind of a combination of taking this experience if he somehow remembers it, but like I said, I don't think he would, and you combine that with, you know, everything uh, that I brought up before about making a, a small personal story, it could still actually be both. And even if Ezra doesn't remember, that still doesn't mean that um, those DC movies are no longer in the Arrowverse's continuity, or rather the Arrowverse isn't in the DC movie continuity. So. It's, it's just a lot of crazy stuff to kind of keep in mind. And obviously, I mean crazy in a good way. So like I said, these are just some of the stuff that's kind of floating through my mind. In the comments down below, I'd love to get to know you. your thoughts. What do you think about this different version of Flashpoint? What do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? What do the events of Crisis on Infinite Earths mean potentially going forward with this different version of Flashpoint as well as what this means for the DC movies going forward? They can still kind of do their own thing while the TV stuff kind of do their own thing, but it's still kind of the thing of even they might not they might not interact but I mean who knows this opens the windows of like maybe there could be more winks and nods to some of the stuff going down in the movies and I mean that even presents opportunity for the movies to be like oh this stuff that went down in the team it might not work that way you can always be hopeful so like I said we'll just kind of wait and see but uh, like I said let me know what your thoughts are about all of this but really that's all I'm going to talk about so the next time we meet be happy be safe we'll let you the fullest and enjoy it good day and goodbye